Hello and welcome to the session. This is Shweta Rao, your English master teacher at Vedantu. And today we will be doing an amazing poem, The Snake Trying by W.W.E. Ross. Uh, we will talk about the poet, about the poem. Uh, we will be doing the line by line analysis and explanation of the entire poem along with the vocabulary and poetic devices in today's session and in the next session we will be talking about the theme title important question so guys the both the sessions are very very important do not miss out any of them okay let's begin with a beautiful quote which is very very relevant to the poem it's like a poem itself so let us read through it life is full of beauty notice it notice the bumblebee the small child and the smiling faces Smell the rain and feel the wind. Live your life to the fullest potential and fight for your dreams. How beautiful and how very relevant to the poem that we are going to read. Because in the poem, we will be talking about a snake. Okay. The title of the poem is Snake Trying. Snake Trying what? Okay. Doesn't it arouse in your mind curiosity? When you read the title. Now we all know that snake is a part of nature. Right? Just as human beings are. And whatever is a part of nature is life is full of beauty. Notice it. Is beautiful. Right? Yes or no? Beautiful. Okay? But have we ever appreciated the beauty of a snake? When you see a snake, what thought comes in your mind? Somebody would think, oh my God, you would be afraid, you would be terrified, right? And you would run away. Somebody would be thinking, oh, it's danger, it's a threat for us. Let us kill that snake. Yes, but has anybody ever appreciated the beauty of a snake? No. Let us see what the poem is talking about, what the poet is talking about in this poem when he says, the snake trying, when he uh, keeps the title of the poem as the snake trying. Now, first, let us deal, uh, let us talk a little bit about the poet, William Wrightson uh, Eustace Ross. That's the full name, W.W.E. Ross. He was a Canadian uh, geophysicist and poet, and he first published, he was the first published poet in Canada to write uh, imagist poetry. Now, what do we mean by imagist poetry? This is the homework, guys, that I want you all to do. Please find out the meaning of there was a, uh, you know, there was a school of po poetry called, you know, the imagist poetry. There was a school of poets called, who were called, uh, who were known as the imagist poets. Okay, we will be talking about this in the next uh, session. But first of all, I want you to find out. Okay, what do you mean by imagism? What do you mean by imagist poets? Right. And later to uh, the first, uh, uh, okay, and later the first to write surrealist verse. What do we mean by surrealism? Okay, so this is again your homework. Find out the meaning of imagism, surrealism, right? Both of which have led some to call him the first modern Canadian poet. Okay, so he was the first published poet in Canada and he wrote imagist poetry and he was later the first to write surrealist verse therefore he was called the first modern canadian poet that is something which you need to know okay uh, you can also relate to the poem more if you uh, understand this you know the genre to which the poet belongs now let us see a little bit about the poem as well it's a very short poem very simple poem, short poem. What is it describing? A harmless snake struggling to go away. The snake trying, right? So what is it trying? To escape. To escape what? The poetic persona in this poem observes the gracious movement of a snake. See, gracious movement of the snake. Have we ever observed that? Have we ever appreciated the, gra uh, you know, the snake as to be graceful? Have we ever considered the snake to be graceful? Have we ever considered the snake to be beautiful? That is what the poet here is talking about. But that gracious movement of the snake is being disturbed by a person. Why? Let's see. The poet implores that the person, uh, the person, the, the poet implores that person to let the snake set free. 
Moreover, through this poem, the poet tries to give the readers a message of showing compassion to the snakes. As I told you in the beginning of the poem, most of us would be liking to kill the snake because we would consider it as a threat or we would escape, we would ourselves escape, right? Or we would drive away the snake. So what is the poet poem's message? We should not kill someone which is something which is a part of uh, nature, right? And we should show compassion towards other living beings. All snakes aren't harmful. Even the venomous ones bite a person when it feels unsafe or agitated. Haven't you heard telling you, don't do anything wrong with the animal? If you do something wrong, only then it will come and, you know, try to attack you. It will not attack you. It will not, you know, um, do any harm to you unless, uh, you know, uh, unless provoked. Right? I think most of us have heard this. Uh, you know, I heard our parents also telling us this. Don't do anything. It will not do anything to you. Right? So that is exactly what the poet is also saying. If you do not, uh, if the even if the snake is venomous, if it does not feel unsafe or agitated, if you do not do any action to make it, you know, provoke to provoke it, if it is unprovoked, it is not going to harm you. Right? So it's the humans who are responsible for feeling them, making them feel unsafe. So here, it's not the snake who is, uh, it's not the human being who is the victim. The poet has turned the tables and he has, he's making, he's showing the snake as the victim of human being. Right? One should appreciate the grace of those beautiful creatures of nature, which we do not do. Okay? So guys, I hope you people are enjoying the session. If you want to join us further and gain 100% knowledge and 100% marks, there's a link in the description box, guys. You just need to visit the link and uh, you can enjoy unlimited live classes with fun and high level quiz quizzes. So here in YouTube, we uh, the live classes are limited, but there in the platform, you have unlimited live classes. And in each class, you're going to have quiz questions, you're going to learn a concept in an interactive way with a lot of fun, with a lot of high level quiz questions, which will make you compete with the students throughout the world. And that is going to enhance your knowledge further and, you know, uh, make uh, your understanding of uh, that particular concept very, very, very deep. Plus, even if you're watching the replay, Okay, that is going to be also very interactive with live quizzes and leaderboards. So even with the re replays would be having live quiz questions and leaderboards. That is something super amazing. Plus, you can download the content with handwritten notes of the master teachers. Okay, after each session, you're going to get notes as well. So notes also made available to you. Plus, you have in-class doubt solving. So in the class, you're going to solve your all the doubts. We have our special team of class teachers who are going to solve all the doubts that you're going to have in the session. And after each session, you're going to have assignments, which is going to help you to know how much have you understood the concept. So you are carrying with you nothing no burden you are doing everything in the class and at the end of the class solving the assignment would help you know how you have been able to so in the class you know also going to uh, know how is your performance right because you will be shown the leaderboard what is your rank how much have you been able to uh, understand and even after the class with the help of the assignment that is also again possible you will be able to know whether you have grasp the content which has been taught in the class if you haven't if you have missed something again you can watch the replay and you know check that out or else you can again come back and interact with our teachers in the next class right so uh, quality tests we also take we give you the performance report so that helps you understand how much you need to work and how much have you already completed so your strengths and weaknesses Plus, if you still have any problem with any particular chapter, you can attend the micro course related to that particular chapter. We have also uh, got right now, we have lots and lots of crash courses being launched. It's already been launched. So guys, you can definitely come and, uh, you know, uh, check the, those crash courses out. They are all free right now from uh, right now, you know, our my micro course has also been uh, also started. So 
you can you know solve every doubt all the we are trying to fill up all the gaps that can uh, that can actually arise because of your <laughs> in your teaching learning in the teaching learning process so all the gaps have been filled guys and that too in a very 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 uh, affordable price right so you just need to visit the link in the description box and uh, use the coupon code as w r e p r o and you can see what is the per class price the moment you use the coupon code s w r e p r o so the per class price is reduced down to 6.2 okay and for a month and here in the uh, uh, 2021 uh, academic plan only 6 rupees per class that is something very very affordable guys so you just need to visit the link in the description box and pinned comment and use the coupon code s w r e p r o now coming back to the poem guys now we'll go through the line by line explanation theek okay? hai the snake trying to escape the pursuing stick with sudden curvings of thin long body how beautiful and graceful are his shapes okay so now what is as i told you what is it trying what is it trying what is the snake trying it is trying to escape something what is that the pursuing trick stick sorry okay so the stick which is after the snake which is pursuing it which is following it okay pursuing is following with sudden curvings of his long body thin long body how is the snake described it has having a thin long body and it is when it is moving it's moving in this way right so it is having curves and that is described as beautiful and graceful so the snake has a beautiful and graceful movement it is making sudden curves when it's trying to escape the pursuing stick okay right he glides through the water away from the stroke oh let him go over the water into the reeds to hide without hurt small and green is harmless even to children so where is he gliding through he's he's moving gliding is he's moving through the water away from the stroke okay away from the stroke uh, of the stick that the man is having with him right and the poet wants that man who is disturbing this beautiful movement graceful movement of the snake he wants him to let the snake go where into the reeds okay so the poet pleads implores okay implores or pleads uh the the other person who is having the stick in his hand to let it escape and hide behind the thick marshy plants that is the reeds okay the reeds meaning thick marshy plants because it is harmless okay even to the children right so therefore uh, the snake should not be hurt, uh, hurt okay without hurt it should uh, it should be allowed to go allowed to escape and hide behind the marshy plants because it is harmless even to the children along the sand he lay until observed and chased away and now he vanishes in the ripples among the green slim reeds so uh, till it was spotted and chased away by the person holding holding a stick it laid it lay quietly in the sand so it was lying where quietly in the sand okay along the sand he lay he is the snake okay so here the snake has been personified right until observed and chased away but unfortunately it was observed by this man he observes the snake and the moment he observes this snake he wants to chase him away drive him away and what does what is the snake's reaction now he vanishes in the ripples okay uh, among the green slim reeds so in order to save itself in order to save his life from the stick from, that the man is having the snake disappears where in the ripples of the water and hides in the camouflaging green bushes of the marshy plants right so guys this is the vocabulary part if you have any problem in the vocabulary then you can take help from here all right guys very very easy and these are the literary devices the first one is pursuing stick 
that is transfer the epithet what is transfer the epithet trans basically epithet means uh, one minute let me take the other color okay so uh, epithet means adjective okay so the adjective is transferred okay from the, from one noun to the other okay now pursuing stick stick is not pursuing stick cannot be pursued stick cannot follow right who follows the man so the man follows the snake with his stick so the adject uh, the the yeah so the adjective has been transferred from the man to the stick one noun to the other right so pursuing refers to the person who is holding the stick and not the stick itself all right okay and uh, the poem is written in free verse then we have alliteration uh he is harmless so h h and i also gave you uh, another uh, you know uh, figure of speech that was a uh, kaun uh, sa tha yeah personification right so he is harmless here we also have personification all right and also the repetition of a consonant sound in two or more consecutive syllables the two or more consecutive words in the initial syllable all right guys so thank you so much for watching i hope you've understood the poem and please uh, let me know um, you know in the comment section about the homework answer what is what do you mean by imagism and what do you mean by surrealism we will be taking up taking this up in the next session till then guys thank you so much take care bye bye see you very soon in the next session